Hello everybody and welcome to this pre-recorded training for GCSE 9 to 1 English Literature. In this presentation I will be focusing on the play Refugee Boy by Lem Sisse. In this presentation I will start by giving a brief introduction to the play for those of you who are not familiar with the text and its themes. I will then focus on how it is assessed and look at some details from the 2023 summer series. I will then discuss how you might encourage your students to revise, as well as talking through the support material we have on the website to start you off with teaching this new text. So let's start with an introduction. This overview was taken from the student presentation on the website and provides a quick synopsis of the play and its themes. You will need to pause this recording to read this and restart when you are ready. Now we all have a brief overview of the play, let's look at how the students are assessed on the text in the exam. This text is part of Paper 1, Section B, Post-1914 British Drama or Prose. As you can see, there are a lot of texts to choose from in this section, and your students will need to answer a question on one of the set texts listed. There are four texts added for first assessment in 2021. Corum Boy, Boys Don't Cry, The Empress and Refugee Boy. If you would like to know more about the other three texts, please do listen to the pre-recorded events for these texts on the website. These are the questions from the Summer 2023 paper for Refugee Boy and these can be found on the website by clicking the link on the right hand side of this slide. The questions for Refugee Boy are always question 17 and question 18 on the paper so students should be able to find them easily. Students are instructed to answer either question 17 or question 18. Each question has a quotation from the text as a starter and then the question underneath. Students are reminded at the start that their response will be marked for the range of appropriate vocabulary and sentence structures and accurate use of spelling and punctuation, which is AO4. In the summer of 2023, the questions were question 17, how are Mr and Mrs Fitzgerald significant in the play? Or, question 18, explore how courage is important in Refugee Boy. Students are also instructed, for each question, that they must refer to the context of the play in their answer. Both questions are marked out of 40. This slide outlines what is being assessed and marked within the question. Here is some of the indicative content for question 17 about Mr and Mrs Fitzgerald and focuses on AO1, which is read, understand and respond to texts. Students should be able to maintain a critical style and develop an informed personal response, use textual references, including quotations, to support and illustrate interpretations. This is taken from page 54 of the Mark Scheme, which can be read in full by clicking the link on the top right-hand side of the slide. It is important to note, as it says on the slide, that this indicative content is not prescriptive. Students are also assessed on how they discuss AO3 in their answers. AO3 is show understanding of the relationships between texts and the context in which they were written. Here you can see the indicative content for both question 17 and question 18. These are just some ideas to show the ways in which the student responses may show the relationship between text and context in relation to the two questions. As well as indicative content, the examiners will use these level-based marking grids to award the marks. You will also use these grids to mark your students' mock papers. The grids on this slide are very small, so you may want to look at them in more detail on the website. The grid for AO1 and AO3 is marked out of 32 and has five levels. There are four bullets in each level. Bullets 1 and 2 focuses on the student's personal response and critical style, as well as their supporting references to the text. Bullets 3 and 4 relate to the student's understanding of context and how the relationship between text and context is integrated into the response. There is another grid for AO4. Use a range of vocabulary and sentence structures for clarity, purpose and effect, with accurate spelling and punctuation. As you can see from the grid on this slide, students are awarded a mark out of 8 for this element of their response. 
You may want to pause the recording here to read the grid in more detail. Now we have seen the questions from summer 2023, let's look at some of the feedback from the examiners and look at the examiner reports. These reports are written after each exam series and are an extremely useful resource for teachers. They contain feedback about the paper as well as commentaries and exemplars for each question and text. This feedback for question 17 has been taken from the examiner report, which you can access using the link on the top right hand side of the presentation. As you can see, the examiners marked a range of levels for this question, with students showing an excellent understanding of Mr and Mrs Gerald and their role within the play. You may want to pause the recording and read this feedback on the slide. It was taken from page 153 of the 2023 examiner report. And here is the feedback on question 18 from the same examiner report on the website. Again, you may want to pause the recording here and read the feedback about question 18, which focused on courage. This feedback comes from page 158 of the examiner report. I'm now going to use the same examiner reports and look at some brief extracts and exemplars from these reports. This is a small extract from a response to question 17 about the significance of Mr and Mrs Fitzgerald. Again, this is quite small on the slide, so you may wish to look at the exemplar and the feedback in full on page 153 of the report. Here you can see that the examiner has commented that the response is a little narrative at times, but the candidate does show some understanding of the significance of Mr and Mrs Fitzgerald. Their use of context also shows some understanding, but it's not always used to develop their ideas and tends to dominate at times. Overall, this response gains a mark towards the top of level two. And here is the same for question 18 about how courage is important in the play. You may wish to look at the exemplar in full on page 158 of the report. Here you can see that this is a sound response, which applies a methodical and systematic approach. The student looks at the theme of courage and uses a number of textured examples from the play, although not all points are fully supported. The use of context is implied in some areas, but the student does conclude with discussing society's outlook on refugees. This response was given a mark towards the top of level three. So I've shown you a couple of exemplars from the examiner reports from 2023, but you can find some more exemplars or some more in-depth commentaries by clicking on each of these links on the slide. The small extract on the slide is taken from a level four response from page 163 of the 2022 examiner report. Let's finish up by thinking about how your students might prepare for the exams. These are some very high level suggestions taken from the pre-recorded student lessons and other packs from our website. I'm sure you have lots of other strategies which you will use. Here are some tips for teachers taken from the Achieving Grades 4 to 5 pack on the website, which you can download by using the link on the right hand side of the slide. You may want to pause the recording now and read these tips in more detail. And here are some tips for teachers taken from the Grades 8 to 9 pack on the website. Again, you can download this by using the link on the right hand side of the slide. Please pause the recording if you want to read these in more detail. Now this is a simple table you may wish to give to students to help them think about how the characters are presented at key points in the play and what they represent in terms of context and themes. And here is a table to help with themes. The large table is taken from the knowledge organiser on the website. You may wish to put all of this on a larger piece of A3 paper for students so they can use the white space around the three tables to make links between key events, characters and themes. And lastly, here is a table with some contextual points from the play. You may wish to add more of your own or encourage students to do the same. Here the students can use the white space around the table to make links between plot, characters or themes with the contextual elements of the play. If you would like more guidance on the table and resources from the last three slides, please do look at the pre-recorded lesson and script on the website to help your students work through this independently. 
We are now coming to the end of this presentation, but I just wanted to show you the support we have for Refugee Boy in particular, but also the GCSE English Literature course as a whole. This is a YouTube video for a case study from Manchester Academy who are teaching Refugee Boy to their students. It is possible to play this straight from the slide if you wish to, or you can click on the link in the title to view it any time. And here is the main area for the support for Refugee Boy on our website. We have put all of the links into an interactive PDF so you can access everything from one place. From the interactive PDF you can access a scheme of work, some drama activities, a knowledge organiser, a student guide and some exemplar responses. You can also access the video of the case study from the Lit in Colour area of the website by clicking on the link in the title. Here is some information about our paid for mock service. If you would like more details, please do download the PDF from the slide or talk to our subject advisor, Claire Haviland. The Pearson team have also been working on creating a series of podcasts called The Full English, which have covered a wide range of topics so far, such as revision strategies and diversity in the curriculum. You can listen to these podcasts by clicking on the link in the slide. And here are the contact details for our subject advisor, Claire Haviland. If you have any questions about this presentation or any of our English qualifications, please do contact Claire using one of these contact points. Thank you for listening and I hope this information was useful.